The following views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect the official position of the participants. Sides of the debate have been assigned randomly in order to create conflict, comedy, awkwardness, and embarrassment. Any resemblance between their true feelings coinciding with the side of the debate that has been dealt to them is purely coincidental. What do you think? Should I have done Majesties? Should I have pissed <laughs> off? I, I only would have done it for the cash. <laughs> So welcome back, everyone. We're doing episode number three of uh, Dealing Out a Double O Debate today. We came up with another topic. What is the topic of this particular episode, John? This is a big topic in Bond history. Should Sean Connery have done On Her Majesty's Secret Service? Ooh, this is going to be an interesting one. Yes. Beforehand, uh, we once again randomly assigned a side to this, I get to defend why I think Connery should have done Majesties. John gets to defend why uh, it should. it's a bad idea to have Connery return in Majesties. Mm. Who's going to argue first? Uh, it's up to you. <laughs> this one, this one, this one's a biggie. This yeah, one, this yeah, one's there's a, a lot to discuss uh, here. Well, I, I, I could present... Uh, uh, my some of my thoughts about why it was good that Connery didn't do on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Right. Um, okay. By like 1969, when they were making this one, you know, Connery he was already burnt out with being Bond. He was already disgusted with all this 007 jazz and getting screwed over and all that stuff. You know, he had established his Bond persona by then, well established it. With like the, the casual sex, you know, bouncing from one chick to another and being this ultra cool, cool figure. And uh, to see the guy, his character, his version of James Bond legitimately fall in love with a woman. And he was going to commit to this one single woman, get married, be devastated by her death. I think it would have just it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked because like he he was bringing too much baggage with all that Bond persona that just he, he was so identified with throughout the most of the decade. It it was it would been too much of a hurdle, too much of a dramatic shift for Connery's Bond. I mean, even like with with some of the his, his films, like they they might have flirted with giving him like more emotion in some scenes, like that famous Thunderball moment. Right. He's he's, yeah. he's not with Domino and like yeah, you know, he puts on the sunglasses. Yeah, to hide like supposedly to hide the tears welling up. Like they didn't even right. go. It, it was so subtle. It was almost non-existent. If you know, if we want to say like you know that's what the intention of that moment was, that move of putting the sunglasses on. Like they never yeah. went fully went there, and they're probably smart because I don't know if Connery. I don't think Connery's strong suit as an actor is like the romance department anyway. Yeah, like the only film that of his that i know um or that i think of of being like a romance where he's like you know we see him in a role of being in love with a woman and it's like sweet and you know all this stuff was robin and marion where mm -hmm. he played robin hood and like audrey hepburn was made marion like they were older versions of those characters yeah. um but i i don't think like romance was his strong suit he was he was good at like you know Action, action, and um, being cool, walking into a casino, looking suave, excellent in his tux. You know, like Majesty's the story. They they needed a 
they had they had to quickly establish okay this is a a, a a new bond story that we haven't seen before this is going to be deeper than like what we've seen previously than him flying little helicopters and stuff this has got to be a lot more grounded and a lot more emotional we have to you know forget the old that's why they needed a new new younger bond a new actor to to tell this story it's just like connery was well too well established i mean like i'm not even like a big lazenby fan but i don't think i i don't think connery would have done as well in the romance department with a lot of those scenes as george did yeah i don't think like i don't think connery could have pulled it off any better than like george did i mean like the the action stuff and like being cool and staring down blofeld yeah connery could have handled that you know fine but the majesty story once they decide to go down that route it was a perfect opportunity to change up the series and they they needed to to eliminate connery and just start brand new instead of like having an old paunchy bond that connery would have been like in 1969 to be in love and like you know have this devastating like you know, uh ending and everything it wouldn't have worked as much as seeing a more young fresh-faced younger actor be bond and see like you know how this can change his character shape his character but connery's bond was already fully formed and especially by 1969 he was so disgusted with cubby and and getting screwed over i don't think he he would have even put his all into that part anyway right well i think connery would have aced it to be honest also the romance bit and i think one argument could be made like why connery was getting fed up with bond besides you know his uh you know disagreeing more with with uh, saltzman and broccoli was also he really loved from russia with love and dr no when, when he did it by Goldfinger, he he said, you know, things were getting more. Uh, it was getting centered more around the hardware. Is what he always said, like you know, right. away from the characters, and and he started disliking by the time of Thunderball flying, you know, the jetpack, and the, when it went into the fantastical more, he always wanted more of an, a real emotional story, which is exactly what Majesties is, and I think why. The romance would have worked so much. Why it would have been so much more interesting to see Connery's Bond fall in love is because we've seen him not do that in the in the other five. We are familiar with his Bond in the first five. We've seen him, you know, go from one chick to the next. You know, he he is pissed when uh, the, the chick in Goldfinger is is painted gold, and but you know, next thing you know, you know, he 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 tries to bang her sister as well, and then goes to pussy galore in the hay, and you know, molests her in the hay. But that, but I think just because we've seen that that's how our bond is, and then all of a sudden to see him lose his heart to this one chick that does get into the, this part, just like in the novels, I think it would have been so interesting because this the heartbreak. I think would have reached me more to see even you know connery doesn't have to have tears i mean lazenby doesn't have it either in the take mm -hmm. they, they used but to see him generally be devastated to, you know to, to have his his uh, newly wedded wife be killed i think he and also the barn scene probably lazenby did pretty fine with that but to see connery you know would you marry me you know to actually see him mm -hmm. like oh wow now he's real I think a lot of people will be like, because uh, especially women watching uh, the early, the, the first five, some women probably can't stand the way Connery handles women, you know, slapping the in gold finger on the ass and, uh, you know, uh, slapping around it, all the, the um, sexist stuff that's in it. To see him, I think a lot of women would be like, oh, wow, so he does have a heart, you know, to, to see him confess his love in the, in the barn scene. I think would have been really good. And there is a good argument you made, like, yeah, he was getting more fed up with it. You know, you only live twice. Clearly, he uh, shoehorned in his performance more than he did in Dr. No and From Russia With Love, where he aced it. But yeah, I, I think because this was such a good script, he may have been motivated more. It's a big what if, but 
Yeah. It's also, Lazenby to me is very wooden. I, I'll give him, you know, you made a strong point with the romance scenes. I think he does good with that. But pretty much the whole film, Connery would have, every scene reenacted by Connery would have been better done by Connery than Lazenby could have done. I mean, Connery's an actor. Yeah. Uh, that's an argument on itself. You know, Lazenby wasn't. And I, I, f I think he, he is capable of, you know, pretending to care for uh, for Diana Rick's character in the end. I think he, he could have aced it. Like, even, like, you you know how, like, they describe, like, Connery in the, in the, in the films, like, he moves like a panther. Like, he's got a cool move yeah. movement to yeah. his bodies. Like, I could see him... Like the one scene where he go, he goes into the office and makes the copies and stuff and and, and puts the uh, the briefcase the copy yeah. machine into like the crane. I could see Connery doing that and like being so smooth and elegant yeah. Yeah. Uh, during that whole thing, like opening up the door, flipping through the Playboy, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But when it comes to the um, with him and Diana Rigg, I don't know. I I, I don't think he it would have been pulled off any better than Lazenby and that was the core of that movie that was like the whole thing of this movie like him uh, he meets the woman like she's gonna uh, drown herself Th that whole like the it's kind of a corny montage of them walking and you know laughing with the the, the song yeah. going and everything Connery doing it it would just seem weird to me it wouldn't look <laughs> convincing yeah the, the, somehow, the love somehow. montage with Connery it definitely would have been different. You know, he he he, he he's probably less sensitive than than Lazenby, on you know. So the the shots would have been different. You know, I can see him walk next to her in that park, and you know, look at um, you know maybe on the horse. Ah, I'm even having trouble with that. But the part yeah. on the beach where they're like kissing in the wind. Yeah, yeah. That that's great, that's great another job. one. Uh, yeah, but. You're right on on that one. I, I'll have more trouble picturing Connery with that stuff, but they can probably like, add it differently. But and then yeah. at his age, at that point, because I, I I keep thinking like, okay, he'd look similar to Diamonds. Yeah. And him and Diana Rigg, I'd be like, wow. Like I know, like they always cast older actors with the younger women, like younger, prettier women, and so I mean, heck, he was being cast with Catherine Zeta Jones, like when he was like seventy years old. But like. Oh, it, yeah. It would have been seeing like paunchy Sean Connery and beautiful Diana Rigg. I don't know if like they would have clicked. I don't know like even visually yeah. like they would have clicked. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good point. But I'm still convinced he would have been better than Lazenby. I, I'll uh, the Scottish. Um, oh, the, 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 oh, you yeah. know that would have fitted more on Connery actually because of him being Scottish. But I'm having trouble picturing him a little bit with that. But he, I've seen him. In other stuff, Fleming incorporated the Scottish background because because of Connery, of Connery yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I could picture Connery walking up in like you know, Peace Gloria in his kilt, and then like he sees all, the room full of girls. That that's very like you know, Connery is just going to have a field day. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and 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 th I think you know, to see Connery mingling all these women. Because with Lazenby, I'm like, you know, oh, you're supposed to be in a committed relationship. What's this guy doing? But Connery, I think I, I would have found it funnier, you know, when when the when the eight is being written on the leg, you know, the room number. Oh yes, yeah. And you, you could you could totally picture Connery sitting there like, and uh, <laughs> and what's the matter, Bob? Oh, it's just a slight stiffness coming along, you know. You, you could <laughs> you could picture you could you could picture Connery doing that stuff, you know, with with like. With like the sarcastic, you know, he did it in You Only Live Twice as well, where um, where uh, Aki goes like, you wouldn't sleep with that horrible woman. And he already did. And he's like, oh, no, heaven forbid. You know, the, the type of, he has that humor down way more than a dubbed Lazenby uh, in that scene. Like he could do that, but like yeah. legitimately, okay, this is the woman I'm going to marry. Will you marry me, Tracy? I don't, I don't. I, That's because we've never it. seen it, but I I think it would have been so powerful because because up until that point we've never seen it. I think that's why it would have worked. Like I said, that the women would be like, oh wow, he does have a heart, you know. In, in the novels, it also didn't happen until Majesties and and Casino Royale and Majesties, the two the two big women he falls in love with. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. 
mean, I love Connery, but I don't know. Him in that as that bond and that story. I don't know. Maybe Lazenby yeah. isn't as bad as I always used to feel. I think that's another argument I, I make in the first place. Majesties is not one of my favorite Bond films. That's very controversial in itself. I know a lot of, you know, it's top favorite to the majority of diehard Bond fans. Mm -hmm. But one of my reasons for not getting as much into it is Lazenby. And I always maintain I love Lazenby, the, the, the man himself. Like, I identify with, with his stories the most as a human being. I just don't think he was a good Bond. And Connery, he, he was established. I think, I, yeah, I think Majesties could have potentially be one of my favorite Bond films too, had Connery oh. uh, started this. Hmm. Probably. Maybe, maybe, you know, it's the biggest what if ever, but yeah. I think I can picture him in a lot of the scenes. And, you know, you could argue like the law of Montage, yeah, maybe that, maybe Lazenby would have topped him in that one or fit it more, but the majority, man, the 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 the, the, the pre-title sequence, the you know Con Connery, uh, the cigarette, the uh, you know the shots of him. Oh he, yeah. He would have been, yeah, yeah. I can see Connery do all that stuff. You know, uh, the casino bit way cooler than Lazenby. Lazenby doesn't have that panther walk when he comes off the stairs, and that it just looks like a farmer that just you know came from the, <laughs> the wastelands and and he put on a tuxedo for the first time in his life. Very, uh, very raw and stuff. And Connery, you know, you could you could picture him, you know, looking around, the women eyeing him, and just. I'm I'm now picturing more of a Doctor No Connery, of course. You you have yeah. to imagine the diamonds yeah. one walking in, but he he would still be smooth probably. But um, I mean, it's, uh, a, it's a hard one. Like he had said during you only lived twice. Like he was done. He was basically okay. This is it for me. But I yeah. wonder if, like, they, I, I never heard if, like, they ever approached him and or said, hey, we want to do Majesty Secret Service. Would you be game for that? Because, like, they obviously contacted him again for Diamonds Are Forever. But, like, yeah. I wonder, like, what if, if he was ever offered Majesties or he knew what they were doing or if he, if, and if he was offered the script or. Exactly. And it's funny, too, because Majesties was originally going to be, I think. Uh, instead of fundable, they were already going to do it. And again, instead of you only live twice, but it got it got uh, shifted backwards every time because it, there wasn't any snow in Switzerland in that particular point in time. I think something like that. And, you know, someone in the comments will say like, no, it was like this. But it had to do something with the snow. Why they they kept uh, putting it on the shelf for, and saving it for later until eventually Connery uh, bowed out and never got to do it. But there, there could have been a point in time where Majesties would have been like the fourth or, or fifth Bond film, and, and Connery would have done it regardless. Mm -hmm. uh, he just finished uh, You Only Live Twice. We had Donald Pleasance as Blofeld, like the big volcano thing, Little Nelly, you know, all the gadgets. Going back down to such a, like a realistic spy story a, a, a realistic uh, bond story would that have worked would the people have made that leap would it have been successful I like the yeah I, I think i think it would have been much more successful than it was now you know now it's in retrospect it's really loved at the time it wasn't because of lazenby mainly mm -hmm. because you know there was never there, there had never been another one playing bond before connery i think it would have been and it's like comparable to Moonraker to For Your Eyes Only. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, no one would have minded to see. I mean, hey, they all loved it when he came back in Diamonds, which, you know, is, in my opinion, the worst Bond <laughs> yeah. in the series. But they all loved it when he returned, even though, like, technically and uh, story wise, Majesties is the superior film, but they, they hated it at the time because of Lacenby. Like it would have been, I, I'd love to visit the alternate universe to see where Lazenby was never cast as Bond. And then, like, you see yeah. Majesties with Connery, and then Diamonds yeah. Are Forever with Roger Moore, and that's his debut. Yeah. Because it seems like, better. like Diamonds is, is Diamonds essentially is like, like a Roger yeah, Moore thing. It is. Oh, Connery. And, and, and also because Guy Hamilton did it again, it would have fit it with the, the two he did after Diamonds. Yeah. Yeah, I think another thing that annoys me with, with Lazenby is you. I always, re, like the first hour, I really struggled to 
just get used to. It's used just the one film, yeah. especially when you watch them in order. It's like the first five are pretty fun Bond films, all five of them. I liked You and Live Twice too. And then getting into Majesties, I'm always really getting used to it. And then as soon as I'm kind of getting used to it, you get to the part where Lazenby is dubbed. And, and it takes oh, yeah. you out of the film again. It's like, oh, wow, this is completely different. Uh, you know, and he, it, it's so weird and different. Um, and it, it, it's like watching a different series, different universe with That's Lazenby. That's the thing. Like, yeah, it, it, it is like that film is so different compared to like all of Connery's films. Yeah, that, like I think Connery would be a handicap in that part. Yeah, I think the film mainly feels different because of Lazenby, not because of the story. I think the leap, you know, if we see Connery for the sixth time in a row, and and in a now more serious story, it's not something drastically different. Because from Rushing with Love was really serious too, and and so is. In some ways, Doctor No, you know, mm. it wasn't yeah. until like Goldfinger, Thunderbolt, You Only Live Twice, those three, where it really went into the cinematic universe. The the first two were very novel inspired. I think, you know, you you could see a leap like Doctor No from Russia with Love and then Goldfinger, right, uh, right, Thunderbolt, you know, and then being more serious with um with Majesties. But I think yeah. most people would have accepted it, it, it a more serious tone. You know, we don't need volcanoes every time, you know. Yeah, it's true. But, like, I still think, like, Connery's age and his appearance at that point, he was just, he was, had they done but, maybe Majesties with Connery, like, yeah, in Dr. No era, like, the, 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 like young and ripped, and it, it would have worked better. But, like, you know, middle-aged yeah, Sean Connery. Yeah, I, I agree. It should have, um, it, it definitely, like I said, because they like were going to pay and, yeah, all that yeah. stuff. It would have been perfect to see him at his glory days, and like you know, like he looked in from Russia with Love and Goldfinger and Doctor No. Like those three are when he's at his absolute smoothest. And it's funny too because like it wasn't that long ago. It was like from what yeah, he aged rapidly. To, he, he yeah, aged oh rapidly. really? But yeah, another ar- another argument you made is um, him being paired up with Diana Rick and yeah. looking the way he did, you know. He probably wouldn't have been paired up with Diana Rick. That this is what if territory. But well, you know, yeah. the reason why Diana Rick was cast it was because she was such a good actress to make up for. Uh, and she was a yeah. She was a name. Lazenby's lack of, uh, Yeah, and because Lazenby wasn't a good actor, they really needed star power next to him. So probably, but we will never know this. If Connery did Majesties. We wouldn't have had Diana Rick. Some some other chick might have played. Uh, yeah, like you know, it'd be like uh, Sean Connery and Raquel Welch in Honor yeah, Majesty's something Secret like Service. That. <laughs> yeah, but they uh, we'll never know. But mm. assuming, but uh, even if it it was Diana Rick and Connery, I I still think it could have been fireworks to see those two together. And it's the second adventure chick he would have been with too. Uh, you know, yeah, oh yeah, that's right. With Honor yeah. Blackman. So, we'll never know. We'll never know. Yeah. I think I've exhausted all my thoughts on it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Food for thought, though, this. Uh, a lot, we, we definitely got into the uh, what if situations, but uh, interesting uh, discussion once again for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching my video. Do you like my work and would you like to help this channel grow? Well, consider becoming part of the exclusive DBF community and help support my channel. What is the DBF community? Well, it's the community over at my Patreon page made for the biggest fans of my channel. Why did I create this community? Well, you see, every average project you see on here takes me roughly 30 to 40 hours to produce and upon uploading it, all revenue is pretty much taken away immediately by MGM or other film studios, unfairly as it goes against the fair use policies. So that's why I'm always looking for support and set up this community on Patreon for the biggest diehard fans of my work. 
I am a believer that those who support me should be rewarded with a ton of perks, like getting two weeks early access to all my latest videos, receiving a personal thank you video from me. I will also send you my custom made Blu-ray covers that you can print out and put in empty Blu-ray boxes and you get exclusive access to the supporters discord server where you can chat with me and fellow Bond fans whenever you like. And everybody that supports me also builds towards new goals for the channel's future. All these perks come for a little $3 a month. All support is appreciated immensely. Thanks a lot guys.